you got into the space very early, what you could say very early when it comes to blockchain art, because in 2020, yeah, there wasn't, there wasn't a lot of people yet. And mm -hmm. so you were early in Rarible. Okay. That's, that's interesting. And how, how were the, those are the, the first, the first pieces that you were publishing, you said 3D, so it was more 3D based. Yes. I mean, the, the first three or four, I didn't have this, this idea of scarcity in mind of, of real art for doing art and, and being an artist for me it was like this is fun let's try some things and i did some collage or whatever very mm -hmm. very likely that now I, i didn't burn it because for me it's historical and then i did a collection of 3d uh, assets that were quite of funny also because for me it was like a funny part it, uh, it was a we had a lot of room for innovation in this time and collaboration with artists because we were in a lot so it was not important to have really like a strong uh, style and, uh, and there were no FOMO let's say like this behind yeah. and it was very open um, yeah hmm. yeah it was more like experimentation right and I, I think plenty of the people uh, were there just because they were curious, right? They weren't looking to, to make money or to, you know, there wasn't that sort of ambitious or uh, that potential early on. And things changed drastically, right? In 2021, 2022. Mm -hmm. um, and when did you switch uh, hard to, 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 code, to coded art and to generative art? When was the time that you focus on that? Because I think you have released couple of projects um the golden ratio that we mentioned but also i believe it's formations right formations i, I collected one piece so when when did you change your mindset and said okay i'll i'll explore generative coded art cool. thanks so much for for collecting information uh, i think that coding it's something that has been like following me since a lot of years i mean I even did like six months of engineering before moving to moving to design, and most of my friends are tech people, so I was always like playing with code and trying things. And in 2021, uh, I saw art blocks and generative art, and I was like, "Wow, like it's a mix of art and technology, way more than 3D and with code, and I need to learn to do that in this." Mm. So all 2021, I was like trying things, asking to my friend uh, that it's uh, one of my best friends is coder. And finally, in 2022, I no, I I didn't mean that in 2022. I think uh, the first one was block blocks that was in uh, January 2023, but it took like three or four months of coding. So yes, at the middle of 2022, too, I was mm. really using coding every day and trying things and, and etc. Um, but uh, it took me a lot of time. Yeah. Coding takes time, uh, but it's, it's good if you have friends, right, that can, can support you. Do, do you usually now these days work alone or you have technical people that support you? No, I think it's when you want to scale as an artist and also as someone that is not an engineer or I, I know how to code, I can uh, find things and, and connect do, uh, dots and, and create what I want, but there are people that has been coding like for 10, 15, 20 years, so it's very important, important for me to check, optimize the code with them and say mm -hmm. hey, that could be better, etc. Uh, normally what I do now is I code almost everything and um, once i'm happy with that we check it and we clean it together and mm -hmm. uh, if i am stuck in a co in a part of the code i ask something but it's not, it wasn't the case of the golden radio the golden radio was only optimized so i was very happy because i finished all the artistic part uh, only i think that level four was checked by by pierre i think but um yeah yeah no no that that makes sense especially um, a collection like the golden ratio because it's very complicated to come up with these um, long form generative projects right there are many things that could go wrong um, and in the case of that collection can you 
Can you tell us a bit about the story behind it? What, where did you get the inspiration? And um, yeah, how long, how long it, it took to, to complete that project? Mm -hmm. Yeah, inspiration, well, since I'm, I'm a designer and also I did a lot of photography and I painted a lot since I have 13, I think, uh, I, I, I found the, the Fibonacci sequence and mm -hmm. then I investigated a little bit and I understood that uh, the golden ratio and the sequence was everywhere in nature because I'm a very big lover of nature. Uh, since then, I've I've been using a lot. I mean, even in photography, when when you do like the third uh, uh, rule, I don't know in Sp in Spanish is la regla de los tres tercios. The third, oh, okay. Uh, uh, one third, one, one third, third rule, maybe. Yeah. yeah. And with that, and also Fibonacci, you you can put it inside, and for um, like putting more presence in your photography or like uh, pointing to something. It's very interesting to use that and in design and in logos and whatever. So for me, it was like a tool and something that I've been using always. So I wanted to do a sort of uh, homage, no, homenaje. Mm -hmm. uh, like, uh, okay. It's everywhere, so I should use it. <laughs> I, I, I should took this concept and push it as a maximum. Uh, so I started to to do some testing and trying to uh, use the most basic um, grid that is mm -hmm. rectangles that grows from the center and can go to the infinite. And okay. from there, I did a lot of variations. I put my style, my colors, and you you tweak it. 